Hello everyone, my name is Rafal and I would like to welcome you to another episode how I create this headshot and this time we're going to be talking about the image I've created for my wife. So we've shot that a while ago and we actually shoot in restaurant. So we're going to go through all the details, I'm going to show you some behind the scenes images to explain you how I even approach this entire um, idea. Then of course we're going to go through the equipment and at the very very end we're going to go through my uh, retouching process. This image was a little bit more complex so there's definitely uh, more steps I had to go through in order to take this image to another level but before we do that let's jump in and talk about uh, the lighting. So there's a couple images I would like to show you. First of all, of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about the lighting. So in this case, um, everyone who actually watched my previous um, videos, you guys probably know I'm using pretty much the same lighting setup. Um, so I use two deep octas, one 39 inches from Alien Chrome, and the kicker also was from Alien Chrome, it was 20 uh, seven um, inches. So in order to um, basically get this um, interesting um, lighting, so I actually have this lighting fairly close, around one meter away from my subject. Uh, there is kicker which was moved a little bit away. I just want to have very, very, very like a small touch of light. I didn't want to have this this um, kicker light kind of um, giving me too much, I would say, separation from the background because background was very interesting. And, and there's also one little detail which a lot of people kind of didn't see it. And as you guys probably can notice, there's a little bit of light uh, which also kind of create this um, interesting background. So basically there was the Nikon um, SB910 um, with um, yellow gel on it. And I'm going to also show you how the background look like because that's you, you can't really see from this image. The restaurant actually they, they was fairly, fairly uh, bright. There's a lot of windows around. So that's why I had to actually increase the power of, on my main light. Uh, the kicker was a little bit less, but also I have to push basically the the background light because the the background was was quite away so i, I need to kind of increase the power to just get this light a little bit more vibrant so this is um how the background look like so this is little kind of um area for for the clients there's some tables and there are some like really really cool lights and actually i have a shot here which is going to show you actually how those lights looked from the very very close and this is what uh, create this interesting bokeh. So that's why this is um, something very, very cool. I actually, when I um, got a green light, I was able to shoot in that place. Uh, this is the first thing which actually came to my uh, attention. And I just knew as soon as I will actually use that as a background and move my subject away from it, it's going to create this very, very interesting um, lighting. On the top of it, and I don't know if, if you guys can see it, this wall has some kind of like a mirrors in them. So, so basically whenever I shoot, and as you guys probably can see it over here, uh, there is this little uh, speed light which actually shoots the light. And also this, basically these mirrors also reflect the light to give this kind of really, really interesting lighting and interesting effect. So basically that's what was creating this kind of interesting lighting. This is how this whole thing looked like from my perspective. And this was my actually the lighting setup. So pretty straightforward, nothing complicated. If you guys are gonna have any specific questions, please feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. So let's move on into the gear. So basically, as far as the gear goes, Nothing changes. I use pretty much the same equipment. I was shooting with my Nikon uh, D800 with uh, Nikon 7200 VR2 and also I use my Nikon SB910 
an SB800. Again, pretty straightforward. We talk about the lighting. So this particular image I've, I'm showing you was shot at uh, the focal length 200 millimeters. I really need to compress the background. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting this kind of really interesting bokeh. The shutter speed one was 1 to 160 of a second. Then I shot at f3.5, the ISO 160. And again, I was actually having my white balance set up to uh, 5000 Kelvin. This is basically my starting point every time when I'm shooting because my speed lights actually work best on that uh, white balance settings. And I, I found this is the, the, the closest I'm getting to get the correct white balance. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the actual image. So this is actually retouched image already. So this actually was what I got from the camera. So this was actually the image which I, I shot it. This is how this whole thing looked like. In my opinion, it's not bad. There's there's a lot of lot of things which um, had to be fixed. There's not much when it comes to actually the effect itself. I didn't uh, retouch basically anything when it comes to the background. How we're gonna go through those steps? I have to just do a little bit more of kind of color grading and this this image pop a little bit more. So let's kind of go through this entire process and let's discuss what I've done. So the first step, of course, is just a general cleaning. So you guys can probably know this. Even she had a makeup done. There's still some stuff on her uh, chest. Uh, there is some stuff on her uh, skin, which I had to kind of like uh, fix it. So the first step was pretty much just removing basically everything which was kind of like bugging me and there's um, she had some little pimples here and there and I had to basically um, remove them so that was pretty straightforward really quick fix the next step of course is uh, my first uh, dodge and burn which is kind of heavy to replace all these discolorations and even this image already looked like it's really nicely lit uh, there's still when you actually start going through this dodge and burn process you can really notice there's 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 a lot of things going on so that's what actually changes so you guys probably can see this very clear uh, that um, I actually just kind of work a little bit on the shadows to even them out and make sure this whole thing kind of looks much more clean so that was the first dodge and burn step and this was kind of before and after so you cannot really see kind of like when you're looking at the image, let's say, which is fairly nicely lit. You have to go through this entire process, turning this image to black and white so you can really see which areas needs to be fixed. And everyone who is interested to learn how I exactly do it, I have tutorial available. You can actually purchase on my website and, and I'm going to kind of walk you through this entire process. So the next step after my dodge and burn. The next step is, of course, working on her eyes and the eyebrows. So you guys can, probably can see. I, I want them to pop a little bit more and make them more sharp and more visible and kind of have a little bit more impact. So this was before. And also I work a little bit on her eyebrows. Okay, this is one step ahead. So basically I want to make sure that some of those gaps which are a little bit lighter they're even out and they look um, really nice so this was before this is after pretty straightforward those are the little details which you actually have to work on to bring this image to another level so the next step of course what I, usually what i do i go through color grading so basically what i've done and like we can go a little bit step by step and I can uncheck some of those stuff. So the first thing is basically the color balance. So I add a little bit more redness to, to give this image and give her skin a little bit kind of much more warm tones. I think I push it a little bit, but um, we're gonna kind of um, in the in the next steps kind of even out this a little bit, but that was the kind of the first thing. You guys can see there's more red into the image. There's a little more yellow and basically that's what kind of gives this image a little bit more warmest. The next thing was actually giving the image a little bit more contrast. So I used kind of the black and white application, which basically just in this case brings those highlights a little bit actually more defined and actually just kind of darkening the shadows just to kind of get the image a little bit more pop. And then the next step was the curves again, gives the image a little bit more contrast. 
and then basically I actually took a little bit more redness from the entire image just to kind of level it up this whole thing to just to make this whole thing looks a little bit better so that was before the color grading and that was um, after so the next step I work a little bit on her hair as you guys can probably kind of see over here uh, let me kind of show you uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of flyovers so that was before and you guys can see she's got a lot of those flyovers all over the place and I want to make sure we're gonna kind of clean this up um, a little bit because that's what kind of makes her hair uh, looks much more clean as you guys probably know um, when it comes to shooting I would say uh, women they want to they want to have the hair look perfect and sometimes this is literally impossible we need to use Photoshop to basically clean up some of those things just to kind of make the hair look a little bit uh, better okay so that was the next step so we clean up the hair so the next step what I've done I use liquefying just to kind of bring the image a little bit more symmetry so you guys probably notice the hair are just kind of all over the place her um, outfit also is a little bit kind of um, there's a lot of things going on and there's no symmetry so basically I use liquify to just kind of even out everything and just kind of make sure that everything has has some kind of like nice shape and kind of looks a little bit better okay so the next step what I've done I actually work on the hair a little bit more because there's some highlights and there are some stuff which was kind of um bugging me so basically I clean up you can if you guys can kind of like a look closer over here you can see that there are some highlights and I found like it was kind of distracting and I didn't really like it very very subtle um, adjustment but I just want to make sure that the the hair have this kind of like really nice and a smooth look and there's no kind of like highlights and crazy because that's what kind of doesn't make this look good especially when you do image for your wife you want to make sure you know it's perfect because sometimes clients they're not gonna tell you anything but uh, your wife will point it out um, everything and you guys probably gonna also learn this stuff from your clients as well they're gonna see things which you don't see right so this is kind of good to kind of train your eye to see some of those things okay so the next step I actually and we talk a little bit about it a few few minutes ago about this redness I found that the hair and the jacket was was pretty much too red because when we added a little bit more redness to the entire image basically that was affecting pretty much the entire image and um, I just want to make sure that I'm gonna take this away especially from the hair so the the hair have like a little bit more brunette look and doesn't have too much red in it so that's why basically what I've done I just go straight to basically the selective color and where I can directly adjust specific colors and then I just basically remove the red and then we use mask to basically just unmask and we basically just only use the mask to um, only cover those areas which they need to be adjust okay so the next step what I've done uh, as you guys probably can see um, there is some kind of still flyovers from the hair and I just want to make sure there's nothing kind of sticking out and there is no as I said flyover so I actually just uh, clean it up a little bit you guys can see on the top over here they kind of disappearing just a very very small things which we were addressing okay so the next step what I've done of course whenever you are adjusting colors and uh, adding contrast and, and, and working on certain things then basically you shifting a lot of those colors those tones and I always doesn't matter you know how many um, what kind of approach I have to retouching I always do uh, my dodge and burn twice at the beginning at the very very end where the image is almost I would say ready to go then I actually do my the last light dodge and burn just to kind of bring this whole thing just to kind of to the another uh, little uh, level so basically as you guys can probably can see it there is some really really harsh shadows and there's still few things here and there and that's actually just took care of it just to kind of make the skin looks even better and much more uh, smoother in this case I didn't use uh, frequency separations everyone 
who actually knows me you guys probably know I've been talking about it for many many times I very very rarely use uh, frequency separations I, I deeply believe that dodge and burn can fix some of those things uh, perfectly it's a little bit more time consuming but I actually prefer this image because it's it's still kind of contain the, the texture of the skin as you guys probably can see from very very close that uh, this the, the, the texture of the skin kind of stays the same looks natural and um, just kind of look makes the image looks a little bit uh, better okay so the next step what I've done I actually I add a little bit or actually just work on adding a little bit more blacks just to kind of give the image a little bit kind of moody look as you guys probably see again this is very very subtle actually touch just to kind of make her pop a little bit more and the last step in this entire process was pretty much adding a little vignette again to make her pop even more and and and, and make her look even actually more vibrant and then and, and basically creates this interesting kind of like a separation from uh, the background so let's uncheck this whole thing and let's see before and after so that was before and that was um, after so as you guys probably see there's there the, those changes are very very subtle they're not the drastic and and again it took me at least 45 minutes to go for this entire image so it was a little bit of a long process but i think the final effect looks pretty pretty actually cool so i hope you guys like this if you have any specific question regarding this particular um, image and you guys have any other questions uh, please feel free to contact me I'll be more than happy to answer um, all your questions if you guys also have any specific images which you can find on my social media and you would like to want to make me to go through them and explain you how I kind of create them and how I retouch them I'll be more than happy to do that so please feel free to contact me and send me the screenshot or actually point it out which image you guys like and I will make sure I will kind of go through that image so I choose this image particular because again was shot in different environment I uh, was shot in the restaurant and um, again this uh, this approach what I'm using and and this kind of type of shooting you guys you guys can pretty much shoot anywhere it doesn't matter it can be outside you guys can shoot indoor and you have to just kind of look at some of those things from kind of different perspective and you guys can create some very stunning images so I could go on and on about it so but I'm gonna just kind of end over here I would like to thank you again for watching uh, this video and again uh, I will be looking forward to your comments to your feedback and um, I'll talk to you guys very soon bye bye